HRS, the Big 550, the McGraw-Millhaven Show, in studio with us, Larry Stenbach, Chief Technologist of First Rule, First Rule Venture. Welcome. Hey, how are you? Good I'm morning, doing great. Good morning, guys. Um, I miss this segment because I don't get up early anymore because I'm <laughs> up late. Hey, at sometimes night. I miss it because I, I am in I'm in demand. <laughs> you are one uh, man. So hey, we got some interesting tech stories today. Uh, the first, I wish I was more knowledgeable in the realm of medical science, but you know it's fun how technology touches all of our lives in different ways, both for fun uh, to medical science. And actually, this one here actually is fairly close to home. So uh, from what I understand, basically scientists have been able to create essentially synthetic blood, which is something that is very much in demand uh, because, you know, when people have Absolutely. traumatic mm -hmm. experience, they need blood, they need blood donors all the time. But one of the biggest problems is blood can only stay uh, on the shelf, basically, or in, you know, for only like 40 days mm -hmm. or something like that before they have to get rid of it, and they're always in demand for more. Uh, so actually here at Washington University uh, School of Medicine, I uh, was one of the doctors that worked on it, so I thought it was a fun local story. Hmm. Basically this... I, it's called, uh, let's see, erythmor, erythmier. Uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but basically it's a substitute that um, can help be, uh, stay in a powder form for basically six months on the shelf uh, really? and, and does the same thing your blood would do. Now, it's not a permanent. It's not something you can just replace everyone's blood with this stuff, but it can keep uh, trauma victims alive and I mean, uh, that's basically a, be... That's huge. Yeah, and Absolutely. take it to areas where you can't normally store blood. Well, and very think about that in terms of um, you know war zones or other areas where, again, uh, much mm -hmm. in need and, and oftentimes not a, uh, a place. And yeah. you get into the desert, you're not keeping that blood uh, right. very fresh. <laughs> Right. It's expensive to have yeah. cooling at right. that point, and so this stops that from happening. So, again, not a doctor. Some of you guys with more medical experience out there will really, I think, dig this story. And, again, it's got a component here at home. Mm. And so. I love the guy's name, Dr. Alan Doctor. <laughs> Dr. Alan yeah. Doctor. Uh, you know, he knew what he was going to do really early <laughs> on, right? <laughs> All right, well, hey, moving right along. Uh, you know, I've spoke about VR quite a lot here. We even had a VR demo where we had Kelly walking around so here cool. in full room scale VR. And I always say it's one of those things it's that virtual reality for those cor who correct. Know. And and the difference between like a little visor that you might put on with your your uh, phone and room scale VR is that you're actually being tracked and you're moving around physically, and it's it's a totally different experience. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, it's one of those things you have to try. Well, Dave and Buster's actually has just signed an agreement with the, the makers of the virtual reality headsets to actually put in virtual reality. Uh, games and, and experiences in all Dave and Buster's locations starting uh, June 14th. Oh my goodness! So That's gonna be what would so it popular. look? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what would I, it look like? I imagine what they're going to do is things like roller coasters mm. and things like that, where you might sit in like something that slightly moves and has some you know back and forth, and you put the thing on. And let me tell you, when you combine the VR headset, which is already feeding images to your brain that your brain believes. It's fast enough that you're able, and then you add a little bit of tactile motion of like your body moving or anything else. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a great experience. Really? So uh, I think this is really going to show a lot of people the possibilities of what VR can do and uh, put it in a fun setting. So uh, starting June 14th in all 500 uh, Dave and Buster's locations, wow. uh, you can go uh, virtual reality it up. That's going to be of very cool. Uh, moving right along, I just thought this was. A very San Francisco story that was worth talking about. Uh, Uber is actually uh, trying to acquire and get in on, on the scooter craze, sharing scooters in San Francisco. Apparently, this is a thing uh, that's going on that I thought was kind of interesting. And Uber's always trying to get, you know, its claws Well, and you know, stuff, when but... it makes sense, you do bike, bike sharing. And, and you're so... seeing a lot of the bike sharing here around oh, St. Yeah. Louis, you know, with the line yeah. bikes and other things like that. But, well, but let's scooters. be serious about this. We were talking about this last night on my show. I've been to San Francisco, and you're not riding a bike up and down those hills no. in San Francisco. It's <laughs> got to be a scooter. Yes, which makes sense that they're thinking about doing this yeah. then. So yeah. it's just interesting to see that Uber, of all people, is <laughs> trying to get. There's obviously some money to be made, but yeah. interesting, yeah. interesting stuff. Uh, and, uh, well, very finally, Apple has uh, got the WWDC. It's their big event. This year it's honestly pretty boring. There's not a lot of new, new items or anything like that, mostly mm -hmm. software. Uh, but they're basically claiming that, Siri is going to get a lot smarter, and I I well, would say let's, I hope Siri does. I hope she does too, and let's just wait and see. It's kind of because one of those things. I ask her all kinds of questions. She's like, I don't know, I can't answer. What do you mean? What? Right. Well, and I think it's pretty well regarded that Siri of 
compared to Google or Apple's voice systems, or excuse me, Amazon's voice systems, mm -hmm. it's kind of the, the, in the back of the pack and they really need to do some work on it. So yes. hopefully your iPhone's gonna get a little, little bit smarter here in the next uh, software update. Well, so. I look forward to that. There we go. Let me ask you this, Larry, about sure. going back to the virtual reality. Mm -hmm. One of my concerns was that um, when I first started going to the big screens, uh, what do you call those things down at the uh, Science Center? Uh, oh, like the, um, you the know, dome screens yeah. and all that sort of stuff? The kind of the motion sickness. Correct. Is that an issue with virtual reality? You know, early on in early uh, hardware, it was. And you had people getting really motion sick. But then actually there was a technology, or a, a method developed that actually completely eliminated motion sickness in users. Uh -huh. And what it is, it's actually fascinating. They feed your eye a higher frame rate. So your eye can see, you know, 30, 40 frames a second, you know, when you're looking at a, at a screen. Um, but basically they feed you 120 frames a second and in between each frame they put a black frame and apparently mm. you're even though you can't really comprehend it mm -hmm. your brain and eyes can and it like resets your balance and it causes no motion sickness that is it's fascinating. a fascinating uh, fascinating change excellent so, so have you done the vr like roller coasters and stuff oh yeah oh yeah i actually have a full vr heads uh, headset stuff <laughs> at my house of course you do <laughs> so, ah, you got to experiment you, you spend your weekends <laughs> you got it larry sandbeck thank you very much Thanks, see you guys your